Hello everyone. If you follow my friend John David on YouTube, you know that he recently posted a video, a book haul video showing uh, his recent purchases from the publisher New York Review of Books. And inspired by that video, by John's video, and um, in an attempt to ease my way back into posting videos because I haven't posted in a while, um, I've lost kind of my sense of rhythm. I thought maybe I could do similar things. So this video is uh, inspired by John David. And uh, these purchases were also in part inspired by John David. He, to he was the one who told me about the, the sales, the special sales on New York Review of Books. So I'm going to show you these 10 books one by one. The first one is called On Being Blue, A Philosophical Inquiry by William H. Gass. And there's an introduction by Michael Gora. This is the book cover, the beautiful purple. And uh, on the back cover, it says, On Being Blue is a book about everything blue, sex, sleaze, and sadness, among other things, and about everything else. It brings us the world in a word, as only William H. Gass, among contemporary American writers, can do. The next one is, um, it has been, it's a book that has been discussed, reviewed by many people on YouTube, booktube. It is a novel by John Williams called Stoner. And watching some of the reviews, including a review by John David, only added to my motivation to read this book. The next one, third book, uh, is called A Journey Round My Skull by Frigaius Carinthi. I hope my pronunciation is not too far from correct. And there's an introduction by Oliver Sacks. There's the book cover, A Journey Around My Skull. In the back, it says the distinguished Hungarian author, Frigaius Carinthi, was sitting in a Budap Budapest cafe, wondering whether to write a long planned monograph on modern man or a new play, when he was disturbed by the roaring so loud as to drown out all other noises of a passing train. Soon it was gone, only to be succeeded by another. And another. Strange, Carinthi thought. It had been years since Budapest had streetcars. Only then did he realize he was suffering from an auditory hallucination of extraordinary intensity. What, in fact, Carinthi was suffering from was a brain tumor. Not cancerous, but hardly benign. Though it was only much later, after spells of giddiness, fainting fits, friends remarking that his handwriting had altered, and books going blank before his eyes, that he consulted a doctor and embarked on a series of examinations that would lead to brain surgery. Okay, so it's a, it seems like it is a first-person account of a neuroscientific, uh, neuropsychological disorder. The next book is a book that John and I might discuss together um, in a series of public discussions, or maybe one. It is a book titled Existential Monday, Philosophical Essays by Benjamin Fondaine, edited and translated by Bruce Baugh. Existential Monday, Benjamin or Benjamin Fondaine. The next uh, selection is a bit of a, a self-indulgence. I'm not sure when I will get to, to this, to reading this book. Self-indulgence in the sense of, I don't know how to explain it. It is a book titled Mohammed by Maxime Rodinson. And there, there's an afterword here by Robert Irwin. Um, from the back. Maxime Rodinson, both a maverick Marxist and a distinguished professor at the Sorbonne, first published his biography of Mohammed in 1960. The book, a classic in its field, I guess field of Islamic history, has been widely read ever since. Rodinson, Rodinson though deeply versed in scholarly studies of the Prophet, does not seek to add to it here, but to introduce Mohammed, first of all, as a man of flesh and blood, who led a life of extraordinary drama and shaped history as few others have. Equally, he seeks to lay out an understanding of Muhammad's legacy and Islam as what he called an ideological movement, similar to the universalist, uh, re universalist religions of Christianity and Buddhism, as well as the secular movement, secular movement of Marxism, but possessing a singular commitment to the so-called the deeply ingrained idea 
that Islam offers not only a path to sal salvation, but for many, above all, the ideal of a just society to be realized on earth. So if you have watched my videos on atheism, you know that I'm not really big on Islam. I'm a former Muslim. I was born and raised and educated um, t until the end of my teen years within a Muslim culture in Iran. Um, but I, it, this represents a kind of intellectual return for me, uh, a critical return, intellectual return to partly my own heritage. <laughs> Next is a book called In the Freud Archives uh, by Janet Malcolm with an afterword by the author. In the Freud Archives. Janet Malcolm is the author of another book called uh, Psychoanalysis, The Impossible Profession, which is a novel, even though the, the, the title of that book doesn't suggest it, suggest it to be a work of fiction. So from the back of this book, uh, in the Freud archives, tells the story of an unlikely encounter among three men. At the center of their Oedipal drama are the Sigmund Freud archives, founded, headed, and jealously guarded by Eisler, one of the three men, whose sealed treasure gleams and beckons to the community of Freud scholarship as if it were the Rhine gold. Um, I guess this is also a novel. How could it not be with that description? Well, I might come to revise that belief later on, but anyways, in the Freud archives. I'm, that's one of the books that I will probably get to sooner than the other books. Next is the collected essays of Elizabeth Hardwick. I haven't read anything by this author, um, but she was recommended to me. Selected by Daryl Pinkney. Next uh, are three books. Th this, these three are not parts of uh, this online purchase. These are I found them in a second-hand bookstore. They are all by the same author, the English author named Henry Green. And the first one is called Blindness. I believe this is his first novel. It's the one I just started reading. It's his first novel. He wrote it when he was a student at Oxford University. And I think he was 20 years old, around 20 years old when he... Uh, wrote this. This was introduced uh, uh, in a very, with a lot of praise by Daniel Mendelssohn. It, the, the book begins with Mendelssohn's introduction, and he praises how good the book is, especially given that it is the author's first uh, novel. So Blindness, and then I also got Living by Henry Green, introduced by Adam Thrill, <laughs> introduced by Adam Thirlwell, Living and then Loving, also by Henry Green, introduced by Roxana Robinson. Um, okay, that's all for now. I hope to be able to um, post another video before too long. Uh, I don't have stable internet access in my current location. Um, and I'm not sure when, I cannot confirm when I will have stable access. Uh, that also causes some problems for our upcoming discussion with John and Daniel, Daniel Garner, OG, OG Rose, quiet. And, uh, but I'll, I'll figure out a way of making it happen. I hope you're all doing well. And uh, I guess until next time.